Hello. Well, today I wanted to just talk about a film that I've recently <clears throat> recently rewatched. Um, it's a movie uh, I've enjoyed quite a bit uh, over the years, and that is uh, Goodwill Hunting. Um, you know, this film is one of my favorite films. Uh, the story. Uh, Characters, you know, Will Hunting, Matt Damon's character. Uh, you know, he's one of the smartest people, like in the world. He's incredible with numbers, and yet uh, he would just rather, you know, just do the kind of work that you know somebody like him you wouldn't think would want to do, like you know do janitorial work, or construction, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, and in a way, it's like this great potential of being able to do so much good with the world, with somebody like uh, his mind, and yet he's in, uh, you know, like a college just you know uh, cleaning the floors um, and then he gets arrested and as a result uh, uh, from a fight um, and he it's an officer but then a professor at that college uh, gets him out so he can do numbers with him and do some mathematical work and uh, part of that agreement outside of that is he has to see a therapist and that's where Robin Williams comes in this character um, of course though he goes through some other therapists uh, before getting to Robin Williams and then First meeting doesn't go all that well, but uh, he slowly but surely they have a good connection, and uh, he also meets a girl at a Harvard bar. They begin dating, and uh, of course we also see his friends and uh, sort of like his life. It's just you know, Will Hunting just doing his in a way, daily routine, hanging out with friends and uh, doing his job, be it you know, janitorial work at the college or uh, later on uh, uh, doing like construction work at uh, 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 working with uh, uh, Chucky, you know, Ben Affleck's character, and uh, this film is really a, just an incredible film. It was very personal in a lot of ways uh, to Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. You know, obviously they're from Boston, grew up with each other. Casey Affleck's also in the film. Um, though Casey and Ben don't play brothers. Um, uh, but this this film is really fantastic. Um, uh, of course, won two Academy Awards, um, Best Supporting Actor for Robin Williams and Best uh, a a Original Screenplay for uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Um, so it's interesting how, you know, uh, you know, Matt Damon is best known as an actor, and yet he doesn't have, like, an Academy Award for acting, but for writing. And I've also noticed how sometimes when they list people who like have won or been nominated for Academy Awards, um, for Matt Damon, I've noticed on some films, you know, on the back of like the DVD or Blu-rays, they list him as a nominee since he has yet to win for acting, and list you know this film 
uh, where he's an Academy Award nominee, as well as like in uh, uh, Invictus um, for supporting actor, and uh, later you know there's uh, The Martian, and he also produced uh, Manchester by the Sea, so he got nominated for Best Picture. And I thought, you know, for like Goodwill Hunting and Invictus, yeah, he didn't win either of those two acting Oscars, but he still won an Academy Award. It's just uh, interesting how somebody who has won an Academy Award still doesn't have, on some movies, they don't list him like uh, on the back as an Academy Award winner. Um, which is interesting. It'd be like saying Clint Eastwood, you know, is an Academy Award nominee since he has never won an Oscar for acting. He's won for directing and producing uh, both uh, in both categories twice. Um, though I guess for Eastwood, he has directed and produced many films. Whereas Matt Damon, really, this is his big notable film he has written. He has written a couple other films, but this is the best known film he has written. Um, not just because he won an Oscar, but also it's really his breakout. Um, though he was in uh, The Rainmaker the same year, um, but you know, the fact that this came out at the end of 97 and he uh, was a. Uh, the writer and the lead actor, uh, you know, this this sort of really helped propel him into uh, being a big name. Um, of course, I'm talking a lot about Matt Damon, but you know, Robin Williams is also incredible. Um, I think this is definitely, a, uh, in my opinion, his best performance. Um, he deserved the Academy Award. I know there are those who think, um, you know. You know, Burt Reynolds for Boogie Nights, and, you know, Burt Reynolds was fantastic in that film. Uh, perhaps if this film did not come out in 97, or Boogie Nights came out after 97, like 98, maybe then we would have, it would have, he would have possibly uh, won uh, Supporting Actor. Um, but I do think Williams deserved the Academy Award for this film. Uh, I also think um, Matt Damon should have won Best Actor. Um, Jack Nicholson won for uh, As Good As It Gets. And that's a very fine film also. Um, it's a film I actually haven't watched in quite some time. But I don't think uh, Nicholson gave a better performance. And um, Robert Duvall was nominated for... Uh, the Apostle, Dustin Hoffman, Wag the Dog, um, uh, P uh, Peter Fonda, and Yulie's Gold um, were the other three nominees. But Damon's just really is fantastic all the way through. I mean, all those uh, all those guys I listed were incredible all the way through. Um, but you know the, the that film, uh, you know, as good as it gets, is a very good film. Um, though I don't know, I don't know. As time has gone on, last time I saw it was a few years ago, and I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I used to when I was younger. I used to see this film quite a that film quite a bit when I was younger, and I enjoyed it more. Um, but as time goes on, you know, I really enjoy this film, so I watch it more often. I find myself uh, really enraptured in the performances and the story. The dialogue is very incredible. Damon and Affleck really are uh, great uh, at writing. Uh, you know, this film really uh, began for Damon uh, when he was in Harvard uh, doing some acting uh, classes. He had to write a scene and directed it, and he was well. And then uh, he had uh, 
uh, Ben Affleck come in and do the scene with him. And, um, and they liked it, and they thought this was good, and they, from there, took this idea Matt Damon had, had written it, this little scene, and expanded it into a script. And um, just hearing about how this film was made is really incredible, honestly. It's really fantastic. Um, I'm just, you know, I find myself with this set in particular, this Blu-ray uh, release, not really a set, I guess, but this release, I find any time I watch this film, um, I always have to watch the, uh, you know, the, the uh, retrospect, uh, the hour retrospect, retrospective uh, that is included in this. It's just incredible. Um, Gus Van Sant, you know, My Private Idaho, and Drugstore Cowboy, I believe, is the name of the other film that he was quite in, uh, known for at this time. Drugstore Cowboy, yeah. You know, uh, and then this film got nominated for Best Director, uh, Best Director and Best Picture went to Titanic. I actually think this is better than Titanic, um, but Titanic is a really a fantastic film. Uh, Minnie Driver was up for Supporting Actress. Um, to me, it's between her and um, Gloria Stewart for Titanic. Um, uh, Kim Basinger in L uh, L.A. Confidential was really good. Um, she, was, she did a fantastic job, but I think uh, Minnie Driver or Gloria Stewart were, were better. But, you know, it's one of those situations where Somebody who was very good one, and you know you hope that's if one's per, uh, preferred pick does not win, you hope whoever does win uh, gave a solid performance that was definitely Oscar worthy and it wasn't for politics or some sort of social messaging that might have been in there or something like that that could possibly sway voters as opposed to years later thinking like. That was just a bad choice. Should not have happened. This person was robbed. And if that person ever gets nominated again, they might give them the Oscar when they might possibly rob somebody else who was the most deserving. But because they didn't give them the Oscar when they should have, they're retroactively giving that, that Oscar to them now for a performance that was not as good as their an earlier nomination. Um, also, Stellan Skarsgård is in this film, and he's also incredible. You know, uh, Gerald Lambeau, you know, the professor who gets Will out of uh, jail and works with him and makes sure he gets, uh, gets uh, introduces him to Sean McGuire, you know, Robin Williams' his character, and. Uh, yeah, this this is just an incredible film. I know I'm kind of talking quite a bit about it here and there, bits and pieces, but the film is incredible. I mean, I really love this film. It's like, I it's like I had any ideas of what I had of a structured sort of discussion of this film. I don't know, it kind of went out of the window, but it was this also was sort of a spur of the moment type video. I was thinking of doing something else. Um, but I decided I really wanted to talk about Goodwill Hunting. Um, just thought uh, if I don't talk about Goodwill Hunting, it's just like gonna be kind of nagging at me, and I won't be able to focus on the other uh, film I, I was gonna talk about, which I will do uh, next week. Whatever you know, that that video next week, you will see what that is. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, just uh, express my admiration and fondness of this film. You know, Lawrence Bender, uh, you know, if you're a Quentin Tarantino fan, he produced this film. Um, produced uh, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Kill Bill, uh, and Glorious Bastards. Um, they don't work together really anymore, um, unfortunately, but... Uh, from the sounds of it, uh, Bender and Tarantino are still friends, so that's good at least. Um, 
I think it would be cool if Tarantino and Bender would uh, collaborate for whatever Tarantino's last film is. If you know, if the next film he does make, this tenth film, will be his last movie ever, it'd be kind of cool if he's able to get people back, like Tim Roth, had a good substantial role, and Michael Madsen, and to be semi and uh, Harvey Keitel. Not just for like a Reservoir Dogs reunion, but just, you know, people early on, Samuel L. Jackson and Crystal Waltz, and yeah, just be kind of cool. That doesn't necessarily have anything, I guess, to do with uh, this film, but I guess since somebody who worked with Tarantino has uh, been on this, uh, worked on this, I guess they're... <laughs> That was a tangent, I guess, that sort of was related in a way. Um, then, of course, Harvey Weinstein was an executive producer, and um, Ben Affleck apparently thought that that is now a stain on this film. Though, when you hear the what people say about Harvey Weinstein, um, he was really the guy who just helped get the money, and he was able to help get the get Matt Damon and Ben Affleck the opportunity that they wanted, which was to act in this film uh, that they wrote. They got that opportunity and, uh, you know, help supply enough of the backing to ensure it can get going. And, you know, that's just, you know, that was his part in the whole movie, which, you know, hey, if, and that's all they had to do, that's great, you know. You know, cool, he just let let it all, let everybody do their thing, and he just stayed out of it beyond that. Of course, you know, with what he has, what he had done uh, over the years is reprehensible, and there's no excuses to be made for him. Um, but, you know, uh, I don't really see it as a stain. I see it as, you know, Merrimax was a huge uh, powerhouse company in the 90s, and uh, this film sort of was at the, amongst the peak of Merrimax. And, uh, you know, Weinstein just helping supply the money and getting things for them to get going, and he didn't really show up on set or anything. He left everything alone. You know, I don't see why him being an executive producer would really hinder the experience, honestly. I kind of wanted to say that to the end. And um, Also, Kevin Smith is the co-executive producer with uh, Scott Mosier, uh, a producing partner of his, also because he helped get the script to Weinstein, because Weinstein helped get Kevin Smith his start and saw Clerks and released that. Um, also, Kevin Smith had cast Ben Affleck in like Chasing Amy Friar I believe um, and they were both in Dogma and he says how when they won the Academy Award everybody making Dogma watched them win and they're like alright yeah and they forgot his name like because they're just they were surprised they won, and so they just started rattling off things, names, and like Boston and other things. But you know, and they come to the end of their speech and goes, "I know we're forgetting somebody." Like, oh, where we forgot? We love you and thank you, and yeah, and that's how that ended. Uh, I know that because I've seen, I watched it obviously this recently, and I actually watched their Oscar speech again just to see exactly what they said, and that's what they said. So they clearly f knew they were forgetting somebody, but they were, I guess, overwhelmed and excited and surprised and shocked that they couldn't think of who who, who else they f forgot to mention. So, uh, yeah. And he says he thinks to this day he got uh, the best performances out of Matt Damon and Ben Affleck because any time either of them thought they uh, uh, were doing 
you know, just to kind of just kind of getting tired or, you know, not really wanting to do another take or two. You know, he would always remind him, like, you know, I was, when I was tired, when I was waiting to hear my name called at the Oscars, and that didn't happen. And so they would give him another take or two if he needed it. And uh, I think that's kind of a funny uh, story. Uh, then Kevin Smith is also good at uh, telling stories, too. You know, he's a very good talker, a good storyteller. Um, yeah, Gus Van Sant, his, his work on this film is impeccable. He's incredible. Danny Elfman's score is incredible and fantastic also. The song uh, Miss Misery by Elliot Smith is fantastic. Um, both uh, gave Oscar-worthy uh, work, you know, in terms of uh, score and song. Both also lost to Titanic, um, but I think those, like the score of Good Will Hunting and the song just as deserving of <clears throat> of the Oscar as much as Titanic score and song, um, but you know, hey, that's me. Uh, but I love this film. I love it quite a bit. Uh, it's a film that I always re enjoy rewatching here and there. Um, uh, yeah. I apologize if you've made it to the end and for the sort of scattered nature of this little discussion of mine, but I really enjoyed it, and this is just, I had really had fun in watching it recently, and I just kind of guess wanted to share it with you all here. Um, and so, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, so, I hope all of you will have a great day have a great weekend and a great week i'll see you all next time